Since I made my last video, which I'm going to retitle part one, some of the people I've been swapping comments with still don't seem to understand the very basics of evolutionary theory. It's possible that they're only pretending not to understand, but for the purposes of this video I'll assume they are honestly expressing what they believe. Unfortunately, popular creationist websites and preachers either don't understand evolutionary theory or they're deliberately misrepresenting it. Either way, what they're presenting is a straw man version of the actual theory, you know, the one scientists work with. Which means that people who only get their information from creationist sources will end up hopelessly confused. This is where people like me step in. I'm not a scientist, and I hold no formal qualifications in evolutionary theory or biology, but I have put in the time and effort required to understand the basics, the nuts and bolts of the thing, as presented by those who work with evolution and build upon it, rather than those who wish to destroy it while so obviously not understanding how it works. People like me feel compelled to publicly expose false beliefs, especially if there's a chance that they can cause conflict and even harm children. The first thing I'd like to address is the absurd idea that one modern species should give birth to or morph into a different modern species. I'm sure you've all heard of Kirk Cameron's crocoduck. No evolutionary biologist has ever proposed anything like that. Only creationists come up with such nonsense. And then they say, that's ridiculous, and claim that the lack of crocoducks proves that evolution is false and therefore the biblical creation story really happened. This is a bogus argument, and creationists must refrain from using it if they wish to be taken seriously. So what's the difference between the straw man argument and the actual theory of evolution? It's quite simple. Crocodiles, ducks, and all other modern species are distant cousins. Very distant cousins. This means that if you follow the family tree of a modern crocodile and a modern duck back far enough, there will be a point millions of years ago when the great 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 etc. grandmother of each is the same creature. This animal and its species no longer exists. It is an extinct species, which was neither duck nor crocodile. I made the following point in the last video, but it's very important so I'm going to make it again. It doesn't matter if you believe that the theory of evolution is true or not, but it is important to understand what it is and how it works. Evolution is the process of how species change over time as a result of natural selection. Natural selection is the process by which the fittest individuals within a population survive for long enough to reproduce. The reason they survive is because they are not identical to the others in the population. They have minor differences, such as more frost-resistant leaves or stronger legs, which enable them to cope better with the conditions of the environment they live in. So those which survive for long enough to reproduce pass on their characteristics to their offspring. If each generation is slightly different from the last, the changes are going to get more and more noticeable as time goes by. Again, I'm going to repeat myself because the following never seems to sink into the brain of the creationist. An animal will never give birth to a different species such as a duck laying an egg out of which a crocodile hatches. Only creationists make such claims. Nor do animals morph or shapeshift from one species to another. It's not like in the movies. Animations might show such a thing, but it is only an illustration, an analogy, a way of conveying the idea which needs to be understood in its proper context. Creationists believe that a supernatural god magically poofed all of the plants and animals into existence some 6,000 years ago, whereas Evolutionary biologists and the overwhelming majority of scientists believe that modern species of plants, animals, fungi, microbes, bacteria and all life on this planet evolved gradually over billions of years from very simple, tiny self-replicating molecules, gaining in complexity and variety, slowly at first but with increasing rapidity, over some three and a half billion years. 
until human beings, thanks to their inquisitive nature, their large brains and their science, were able to piece together a coherent and natural explanation for life and the universe. To me, that's an incredible achievement. But our understanding is not complete. That's not to say that it could ever be shown to be as wrong as creationists claim it is. They do well to understand that the scientific method is self-correcting and not guided by anything other than a quest to understand reality. Our understanding improves as we learn more. Theories are refined. Creationists see this as a weak point, or indecisiveness, as if whether something is true or not is a matter of choice. The estimated age of the Earth and the universe make sense. So does evolution. The data gathered and processed by thousands of highly intelligent and qualified people all point to the fact that the universe is billions of years old and that we are animals. We are related to all other life on Earth and the process of evolution got us here. Magical mythical stories of a jealous, vengeful, genocidal and loving supernatural god turning dust into human beings and then making a second female from the rib of the man just don't make sense. Very little in the Bible makes sense when you think about it, unless you believe that magic is real, which, I think, cuts to the heart of the matter. Most children believe in magic, but life experience and curiosity cause a lot of us to abandon that belief as we grow up. We learn, we figure things out, and we move on. But it seems as if the religious fundamentalists are unable to see the world the way I do, even when I describe in great detail what it looks like. It's as if they're programmed to deny a whole bunch of stuff, including the possibility that their holy book was created and written by men, plus the idea that modern scientists might understand the universe better than whoever wrote the holy books, plus the fact that atheists really don't believe that God is real, or that most also don't believe that there is any such thing as the supernatural, or the devil for that matter. It's as if the creationists are denying reality simply because they place their faith in the humans who wrote the holy books, and the humans who keep telling them it's all real, and that they must submit to the will of an invisible, unverifiable deity. They claim to have faith in God, but I don't believe that's true. It seems to me that they place their faith in a book and the humans who tell them its contents are all true. And apparently that's enough to convince them, so they go on to tell other people who, in turn, place their faith in the words of humans and the contents of the holy books. To me, the unavoidable question is, have any human beings actually experienced a supernatural god? And if they say they have, how confident can we be that what they experienced was a supernatural god rather than a hallucination, a lucid dream, schizophrenia, or some other natural phenomenon? I've been looking for evidence to support any kind of supernatural claim since I was a child. To date, I have found nothing concrete, nothing beyond circumstantial evidence and eyewitness testimony, which is why I'm an atheist who doesn't believe in anything supernatural. There are those who call me closed-minded, but I'm willing to change my mind if anyone can show me irrefutable evidence that such claims are true. I wonder how many creationists would be prepared to change their minds if it can be demonstrated that their arguments don't make sense. Arguing with creationists can be frustrating, and I apologise for repeating some stuff, but I'm determined not to let the willfully ignorant off the hook. If they've watched this far without earplugs and a blindfold, they have no excuse for continuing to assert that evolution is what Kirk Cameron says it is. Creationists, stop putting your faith in other people. Do some objective research. Try to find errors in all of the arguments you hear. You claim the Bible is true. Fine. Let's assume it is. What have you got to lose? If it is true, then every honest inquiry you make will lead to that conclusion. What's more important, a belief which might be wrong, faith in other words, 
or the truth. Like I said, if your beliefs are true, then you have nothing to worry about. Before I go, I would like to thank all my new subscribers who have now taken the total to over a thousand. It seems to be some kind of tradition to make a question and answer video, which I don't know how interesting that would be, but if any of you would like me to do such a thing, then send me the questions that you would like me to answer. Um, if you just put them in the comments section, then I'll just answer them in the comments section. So either specify that you want it to be part of a video, or send it as a PM. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next video.